guys, welcome back to the channel. I am back from Southern California and King of the Hammers. Had an awesome time down there. Um, unfortunately, it's doing this here. So that's raining on my parade a little bit uh, or snowing on it one way or the other. It's too cold outside and I'm not a big fan. I have some stuff I need to take care of out there and I'll fill you in at the end of the episode. But first, let me tell you a little bit about my first experience to King of the Hammers. Maybe some tips, some pointers for next time. Uh, if it's your first time going down there, some things that you may wanna do. Uh, and then my plans for next year because I'm definitely going back and we're definitely gonna do a lot more wheeling and hopefully uh, not break a transmission, which I did. And I'll tell you more about that. All right, so I wanna take you through the week, kinda of tell you a little bit about the, uh, the event down there and some of the things that I did. We had plans to cruise down to Southern California. Anyways, we already had reservations in Palm Desert, California. I didn't really think about it at the time, but as it got closer, I thought, man, uh, I don't know how far away Johnson Valley is from there, but King of the Hammers is happening at the same time, and I have wanted to go to this event for at least 10 years. Um, and it's, uh, it's been something uh, I've talked about with friends and uh, wanting to go do for a long time, and I just thought, you know, uh, I don't have a bunch of buddies I was going with, and that had always been the plan, um, but I was gonna make the most of it and go have fun anyways. So we loaded up the Jeep, grabbed the camper, and cruised down to California. One of the cool things that I found was, uh, having watched it and kind of knowing a fair amount about the event, um, it seems very remote. And for the most part, like, it is. But within 15 minutes, there's a gas station. So there's a couple of good sized gas stations down the road. Um, you're not so far out that if you need something, you know, it's hours back to getting it. Um, so that was cool. I just found that it was a little bit less remote than I thought that it really was. Grocery stores, things like that, even within 20, 30 minutes of the spot. So if you're planning to stay out there for a while and you need to run out and get something, it's not that far. So good, good, good first tip is, uh, you know, bring what you need, um, but it's within driving distance too, so you can grab what you need afterwards. Uh, the other thing that I was told was, if you drive in there, you're gonna wait in line for hours and uh, wait to get in. That wasn't the case at all. Uh, even as you turn off the paved road and onto the dirt road, cars are moving pretty good. Um, even you know RVs with big trailers and things like that, uh, they're moving pretty good down the road. And a bonus, uh, you can kind of dip off the side of the road and do a little uh, desert running of your own if you want, uh, if you're so inclined. Uh, anyways, awesome time, easy to get around down there. The first day I pulled in was uh, for the desert challenge. Um, so all the trophy trucks were lined up, getting ready to take off. I just kind of wanted to get a, a picture of like what I was gonna be able to get into down there, what Hammer Town was laid out like. Um, I had a buddy that was gonna fly in. He didn't end up being able to make it, so it was just myself cruising out there. And I know there was a ton of other people from the Northwest out there. To some extent, I saw them post after the fact, uh, so I didn't realize how many people really were down there from the Northwest. Um, I saw one of the channels I watch is uh, Better Half Off Road. I um, believe uh, his name is Bailey, um, and he runs at LB quite a bit too, but I saw that he was down there. Uh, I was actually pulling out one day, and right as I was leaving, uh, Ryan, uh, Rubber Ducky TJ on uh, Instagram, um, he was pulling in with a bunch of other guys, rigs that I was familiar with, um, or at least a couple of them. Guys I follow on Instagram. I haven't actually met some of these guys in the past. Uh, Bailey, I met briefly at King of LB. He was up there. Um, he knows my buddy Ryan. So saw a bunch of those guys pulling in and thought, hey, maybe I'll shoot them a message and see if I can meet up with them. I wanted to do a little wheeling while I was out there. And uh, that may be tip number two is um, go down there and expect to watch a lot of the event but do some wheeling, have some fun with your buddies. Uh, if you don't have a rig cruising down there and jumping in with somebody else that does, totally a good idea. Uh, still lots of wheeling to be done while the course is closed. There's lots of spots. It's a huge OHV area. Um, so yeah, lots of wheeling to do. Go check out the event, cruise into Hammertown, check out rigs. Um, it's just endless amounts of stuff to do. And then the real party seems to go down at night.
next year, this is definitely coming down with me, and uh, I'll try to get a little bit bigger group together so that we're actually able to go wheeling. Um, I actually ended up breaking my Jeep pretty quickly down there, so <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, I shot Ryan a message, uh, Rubber Ducky TJ, hit him up, said, hey man, if you guys are around, love to join up with you. But tip number three, uh, while it seems like you have good service down there and they do a bunch to post up like a Wi-Fi tent, um, and I, I think they even bring in like some cell phone towers. Um, I had full bars a lot of times and it would say, you know, 5G and it seemed like my phone had it. Uh, it doesn't go through. There's a lot of people out there using it. So um, wasn't able to connect with some of those guys or by the time a message goes through and you've said, hey, I'm over on Chocolate Thunder and then they respond 20 minutes later and they're like, oh, just got to Chocolate Thunder and you're like, okay, uh, I'm gone. I'm <laughs> actually somewhere else now. So um, I know I tried to meet up with Ben Spinney um, and Gary Watson from uh, Mountain Mafia. Those guys came down from Bonners Ferry, Idaho and uh, brought Ben's big rig. Uh, I think it was its maiden voyage out, which was really cool. And then he brought the Predator buggy. And that thing bounced around quite a bit. I know he was in the K&N booth. And then I cruised over and talked with Jeff Howe from Howe Performance at the Amsoil booth one day. And the Predator buggy was there then too. So if you guys don't follow them, uh, you can check out uh, Mountain Mafia Entertainment on Facebook. Um, there's always big events going on. There's actually a deep freeze event coming this weekend. I was hoping to make it to, probably not gonna happen at this point, unfortunately. So having not been to King of the Hammers before, but having some familiarity with the event, uh, I did wanna check it out and cruised out to the Desert Challenge and uh, kinda get the lay of the land. Just cruised out by myself, had an awesome time, was able to just cruise around Hammertown a little bit um, and see some of the rigs that were getting ready to cruise out. The trophy trucks are so awesome. Um, the sounds, the looks, the technology that those things have is just crazy. Uh, so I kind of just cruised around and soaked that all up. I'll be honest, um, I got the camera out quite a bit. I tried to film some stuff here and there, but really, I absorbed it all. And that would be another tip for you. So when you're down there, put your phone down. Uh, you know, obviously get some photos, get some video, check out the cool things, but take the time to like really absorb what you're watching because it's amazing. Uh, there's so much cool stuff there. It's really hard to wrap your brain around all of the different things going on. If you're really into technology and engineering, um, taking a couple of minutes to just walk around different rigs and look at all the little intricacies, the things that they put on there, the approach to different stuff, um, just the uniqueness of different things. It's really cool. So that was really my first day down there was the day of the desert challenge, cruised up to uh, where the back door area is. There's like a spectator area. There's a spectator map, so it'll tell you exactly where to go, where you can check out the races from. And, and to some extent, as long as the wind isn't blowing like crazy and there's dust clouds that don't allow you to see, you'll be able to see where the different spectator areas are. Cause you'll see a group of cars up at Chocolate Thunder, over by Back Door, any of the other miscellaneous places that you can kind of see from, from Hammertown. And you can just cruise out there and check it out. So, sat there, watched the desert racing for a little bit, and uh, cruised out at the end of the day.
So I don't remember the exact timeline and how it all worked out. What I knew I wanted to go back for was the Everyman Challenge uh, qualifying. Um, I wanted to make it back for the Everyman Challenge race and then uh, also qualifying for the 4400 cars and then the big day on Saturday uh, for the race at King. So uh, cruise back out for Everyman Challenge uh, qualifying. Here's another tip and you've probably already heard this but every day is a little bit different out there. So the day that I was out at Desert Challenge, um, the first half of the day chill, sunshine, light breeze. Um, obviously there's guys on dirt bikes, side-by-sides, quads, Jeeps, four-wheel drive trucks, trophy trucks, everything imaginable. And they're running all over the place just kicking up dust. Now if there's a light breeze, that's usually decent because it just kind of keeps it moving, keeps the valley clear, and you're good to go. But in the afternoon of the desert truck race, as I'm standing outside watching this, um, the wind really picked up quickly and out of nowhere, and uh, it turned into a giant dust storm. And honestly, I was looking at the camera footage, and it doesn't even look the same as being in it. It's almost like the camera can kind of see through some of it, but when you're in it in the Jeep, or you're driving through it, whatever, um, you can't see a thing. You have no idea where you're actually even at. You just kind of guide yourself forward. So I did have an off-road app. Um, I used that a little bit to kind of cruise forward because I needed to figure out where I was and how to get there. Um, but for the most part, you kind of just sit still and wait for it to die down. And it usually does. Um, so I would say I didn't bring it. I didn't really need it. Uh, I wasn't too worried about it, but maybe a face covering, uh, just like, you know, whatever it is, one of those scarfs, whatever it is that, uh, uh, that you can get online, maybe something like that just to keep the dust out of your face. If you're in a side-by-side -side or something like that, you're definitely gonna want something along those lines. In the Jeep, I didn't have any problems with it. Windows were up when they needed to be and down when I wanted them down. Um, but that and then I would probably bring a set of goggles down there again. My sunglasses helped a little bit, but when it's really blowing, uh, not only do you get it a little in your eyes, you can taste it in your teeth and you're cruising around doing a little bit of uh, biting down or something and you'll feel <coughs> some sand in your teeth. So um, definitely dusty out there, but it's the desert. So what do you expect? Um, that's kind of what goes on. So for the most part, some of the days were nice. Some of them had a light breeze. Some of them were high winds. It is different every day. You have no idea. So pack appropriately. That said, um, even when there's a light breeze and it's a little cool down on like the lake bed, if you cruise up to Chocolate Thunder and you're standing there for a little bit, the breeze wasn't reaching. I went from being in, you know, a sweatshirt and pants to baking in the sun and feeling like my t-shirt needed to come off. So, um, layers, just bring layers. It's, uh, probably been said on every other spot too, but bring layers, t-shirts, tank tops, shorts, pants, jackets anything. I'd bring it all. Make sure you've got everything with you just so that, you know, you can deal with any condition and have an awesome time out there and aren't freezing yourself to death or roasting. So the Everyman Challenge, um, cruised out to that and uh, just checked it, everything out, watched from Chocolate Thunder for the most part, did the same thing, cruised down and around the village. Um, what was cool and what I took the opportunity to do was everyone comes up, they park at Chocolate Thunder or there's a lot of other spots. That just happened to be where I kept going back. It was a good viewing spot. Also during qualifying, Chocolate Thunder is where they ran qualifying. So for the race, lots of other places to go, but this year um, they ran qualifying on Chocolate Thunder. That means there's a ton of rigs all parked, just sitting, chilling, which gave me the opportunity to watch qualifying for a little bit, but then cruise over and check out the rigs and check out some people's builds and just absorb everything that was going on. So I uh, did a little bit of that. We saw some awesome rigs.
one day and uh, this WJ pulls past me and he actually stopped, but I hopped out, I had to go check it out. Dude's name is Carlos, he has done an awesome job building this Grand Cherokee, uh, building this WJ. It is really well done, dual triangulated four links front and rear, sitting on coilovers, one ton axles, um, just a really well built rig and it looks awesome. <laughs> Had an awesome time. Uh, again, my little guy is too, so he eventually passed out and we decided to cruise back for the day. Um, I had fun just hanging out with them. I didn't get a ton of footage from that day um, and we just really enjoyed the time. So my buddy Mike came out the next day and uh, we cruised around a little bit, checked things out. Again, didn't get a ton of footage. We just kind of hung out and did the thing.
I got to meet uh, Dave Chappelle, um, Dirthead Dave. Uh, he knew Mike pretty well and we ran into him down in the pits. And actually, I was able to meet up with quite a few other people that I had been trying to connect with throughout the week that was just hard to come up with. So uh, good to meet Mark Donnelly from Comp Cams. Good to meet Jeff Howe at Howe Performance um, and just kind of connect some dots and put some names to some faces officially, uh, people I've been talking to for a little while. So fun day out there. And honestly, we just cruised around and checked a lot of stuff out. Had a good time. Uh, Race of Kings Day, Saturday, awesome day. The energy's high, the vibes were good. Um, my wife came out with me to watch that race that day and we just cruised around and checked everything out.
And so that would be another tip. Go explore, go check out different spots. Um, if I had had more of you know, a wheeler with me and a group of guys that we could all cruise out and go check out different spots, I would have done that. Um, there are tons of people out there. So if I had decided to go out somewhere and, and whatever and ended up getting stuck or broke down, there's definitely people to help you out with that. But just cruising around with my wife, we wanted to see some different spots. I would definitely do that next year. Um, but that's my tips. Just go have fun, go enjoy it. It's an awesome event. There are tons of cool things to see. Uh, that was it, that was my King of Hammers experience. It was an awesome time. I would encourage you to go out and check it out sometime. If you're at all interested, just make it happen. There's no reason to wait. I don't know how I possibly waited more than a decade to do it, but it was an awesome time. Next year, we're definitely gonna bring a group down uh, so we can all get together and cruise around and do some more wheeling. Wheeling while you're out there is definitely the thing I wanna do. I'll probably camp out there next time instead of staying in uh, Palm Desert. Although, it was really nice to stay in a super nice green uh, resort with a pool and uh, going back there after being in the desert all day. However, you miss out on all the nighttime activity uh, when you cruise out and I didn't stick around for any of the shenanigans that go on uh, at nighttime, which looks like a blast. Maybe I'll have to participate next year. Anyways, that is it for King of the Hammers, but here's a little update on what we have going on for projects. So the Jeep is down, it needs a new transmission. The gears start turning immediately and I think, do I need to just do something different with this altogether. Do I want to put the same 42 RE in there? Um, I did pick up a donor Jeep right away, like I said, so I'm gonna put that donor transmission in there. We're gonna do that. I'm just gonna make it happen for right now. Um, but there are some big things I want to change on the WJ. After being out there and probably shouldn't have let it influence me as much as I did, um, but I would definitely prefer to upgrade to uh, some different links. I'd like to lengthen the wheelbase. I'd like to put coilovers on it. Um, and it may get LS swapped at some point because why not? I'm not gonna leave that four liter in it forever. I've already toasted the transmission once. That said, this thing's gotta get done and I can't get sidetracked from this project, uh, which is exactly what all that stuff would do. So on the WJ, definitely gonna put in the uh, replacement trans that we have for now. Gonna put in a new power steering box to get it going. Gonna send off a, a new power steering box and uh, get that done. Uh, with Jeff at How Performance. Um, we're gonna put a new uh, hydro assist kit on that because that's definitely what it needs at this point. I'm gonna show you exactly what it takes to take the steering system to the next level, get hydro assist set up, and we'll keep running it the way it is right now with the new to me transmission and a hydro assist setup. So that's, that's the plan on the WJ at this point. We're gonna do some of those things and get that taken care of but this has to get done. Heads have been finished. I just got word yesterday that uh, the heads are all done on them. We had them refinished and I've got some new uh, parts for those. A new valve train that's going into it. The floor needs to go in, the motor needs to come out and I need to get it off to a builder here locally who's gonna help me get the cam set up in it and timing chain, oil pump, just some things like that that we can uh, get a little bit of uh, work done to this. We gotta get this running. I'm super motivated to do it. All right, so that's it. Had an awesome time at King of the Hammers. Um, got some work to do to the WJ. Got a lot of work to do to this thing. Um, regular stuff going on right now. We've got a Toyota Tacoma, a 2020 double cab, long bed, TRD Sport. Uh, we're gonna put a three inch lift on that. Just ordered 33s for it today. Uh, we're gonna get that thing knocked out real quick. I'll share that with you. I'll share the WJ stuff with you. And we're gonna get to work on this. This is now the primary focus. 100% not shifting gears, staying on this thing, getting this thing done. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. I really appreciate your support. We'll see you next time.